All right, guys, today, or at least in this video, we're going to be testing some varmint loads through the 223. This is my coyote gun. I enjoy shooting it a lot, uh, provided it shoots well. <laughs> but uh, today we're gonna be trying out something a little different. This is probably not actually even gonna stand a chance in terms of replacing my current varmint load, but we're gonna give these bullets a shot because I, I haven't messed with them very much. <clears throat> but anyway, we're using Federal Brass. It's all got the same head stamp. I, Admittedly, this is kind of range pickup brass, but we just basically found all the ones that had uh, like FD-17 on them or whatever. FC-17, FC 223 Remington. So anyway, it's all from the same lot, hopefully. And uh, we're using a Remington 7.5 Bentress Primer. When I bought these, they were the same price as everything else. They were cheap, and uh, now you can't find them, let alone get them cheap. But uh, Burger 60 grain flat base varmint bullet. They're a lot pointier than the 55 grainers. It's almost like it's the same bullet and they just shaved the front end off of the 55s. But uh, that and Vitivori N540 powder. Now, I will say that I might have a good combination of components uh, minus the brass because I, I do think that this brass um, leads to some inconsistencies because the flash hole on these are not all that consistent. So I realistically don't know how much of a difference that actually makes but I have seen some weird velocity stuff go on with this gun shooting this brass so I'm not all that confident in it if I'm being totally honest now the thing still shoots relatively well with with this brass like I've, I've gotten some pretty darn good groups but I do think that it, it like I said leads itself to some inconsistencies just because of that flash hole being like oblong or whatever. There's just a lot of weird stuff going on. They, they, they punch them so fast, they're, they weren't meant to be extremely consistent in the first place. One of these days we'll do some testing with Starline Brass with some different bullets probably. But anyway, we just wanna see how these shoots. I haven't used this combination before, so I'm curious. But we got the chronograph going. I've got, I'm gonna shoot 10 rounds on this first one. I was gonna do five, but this is all the same load. So we're gonna give, give it 10 on this first deal here. Ooh, hello. Might need to walk it in a little bit because uh, this was zeroed for a 53 grain bullet, which I wouldn't imagine this is going to be much different, but we won't know until we pull the trigger. So let's go ahead and get started and see where we're at. Oh no, come on. Ah, all right, so target just fell down. So I'm going to go get that real quick. Okay, so we taped the target back up. Hopefully it won't come off again. But uh, our first load is going to be a good one. Um, 24.8 grains of Vitivori N540. We weren't even on target. So I'm gonna go to the center of the paper here. Okay, we're way high. 2,704. I was not expecting that. All right. Let's try this. One thing I like about this Athlon, this is an Athlon 4 to 20 power scope. I like it because it's got locking turrets. You gotta lift them to unlock them, turn them, and you can set it back down to keep it from getting bumped. So I do use this coyote hunting and it works great. So, if you're wondering, I was aiming at the same spot there. I was aiming at the previous impact. So now that it's pretty darn close to where I'm aiming, we're gonna go for that top right diamond, or top left diamond rather. 
2,748. 2,736. 2,729. 2,736. All right, so now that we got the gun warmed up a little bit, hey, actually all that bad. Uh, 2725 average velocity, extreme spread of 44 feet per second, and a standard deviation of 13. It's really not that bad. So now we're gonna move on. We're gonna go up in 0.3 grain increments. So we're gonna shoot 25.1 grains next and we're just going to keep doing that all the way up to 27.2 grains moving on to 25.1 grains of n540 all that brass looked good kind of dirty i think it was a little underpowered so looking kind of sooty it's all right Two thousand seven hundred eighty-five. Two thousand seven hundred eighty-three. Two thousand seven hundred fifty-four. Two thousand seven hundred eighty-seven. Pretty good group. For this gun, that ain't bad. With like I said, inconsistent brass. 2773 feet per second average, 33 feet per second extreme spread, and a 14 feet per second standard deviation. So, off to a pretty good start, actually. I know these bullets are consistent. I've never, I've never actually used this powder, so the powder is kind of new to me. But I just wanted to see. This is something I actually loaded probably well over a year ago, and I, I never actually ended up testing it. It was meant to be tested in this rifle, but I've made some changes to it since then. We're, we're running through it anyway, obviously, but. Uh, I kind of moved on from this project, so to speak, but um, I had a buddy that just really, really liked shooting 60 grain bullets, so I thought I'd give him a try, because normally I run 55s or 53s for coyotes. That's just been my preference, which I'll probably continue to do after this video, but if we shoot a group that's like stupid tight with this, I might reconsider, but we'll see. I, I think I've kind of got my favorite picked out already, but it doesn't hurt to play with new stuff, right? Praying that the GoPro is still recording because like it's been giving me a lot of fits lately. So hopefully it has not shut off and you guys can actually see what I am talking about. If not, it sucks to be you. So five rounds of same load but with 25.4 grains in 540. Going for the top right diamond. Two thousand eight hundred thirty-five. Two thousand eight hundred seventeen. Two thousand eight hundred thirty-one. Two thousand eight hundred eight. Two thousand seven hundred ninety-nine. Yeah, that group wasn't anything to brag about necessarily. Uh, 2818 feet per second, extreme spread of 36, and a standard deviation of 14. Moving on. Next up, we got 25.7 grains of N540. We don't run ARs dry around here. 2864. 2,857. Hmm. 2,872. 2,861. Minus that one flyer, that was a really good group. 
28, 63 feet per second average, 15 feet per second extreme spread with a 6 feet per second standard deviation. That's like a stupid tight uh, set of velocities there, but we didn't pick one of them up. It missed uh, the third shot, I believe. But got all the rest. It's pretty tight. I like it. Oh, I'm going to have so many triggers. Where are we at? I gave the gun plenty of time to cool off this time, I think. Hopefully. Connect. There we go. Okay. So we are on 26 grains of 540. I did run the barrel cooler for a while. Hopefully that will give us an edge. But uh, we're going to keep moving forward. Going to go for the center circle on the big diamond. And we're going to put them all in one hole. Stop moving. You stay there. All right. Here we go. Hmm. 2,932 2,905 2,871 I'm going to have a hard time seeing those hits in the red the Sun's going down, starting to lose some of the light, but for velocity statistics, it kind of went up a little bit. So we had 2908 as an average, 61 as an extreme spread, and 21 as a standard deviation. So definitely went up on those numbers. I'm gonna grab my brass, load up another mag. We're gonna hit the next charge of 26.3. Okay, on to 26.3 grains of N540. These are all just seated to mag length, by the way, if anybody was wondering. Two point 255 or something along those lines for a little bit of wiggle room but for all intents and purposes it was mag length These are gonna be crap. 2960 average, 63 feet per second extreme spread in a 21 feet per second standard deviation. But the first shot was 3,000. The next two were all within four feet per second of each other, and then the last one was 2937. This is what I'm talking about when I said that I believe the primer pockets on these are causing some weird velocity inconsistencies. I don't have a way to prove that per se, uh, and I'm not going to try to do the, the redneck verification. Um, I'm just trying to make a point that if you see weird velocity stuff like this going on, understand that obviously gas guns are not going to be as consistent as a bolt gun is. That's just the nature of the beast. We are using really good bullets. I believe Vitivore is a very good powder. Um, I do like these primers. I don't know if the video is up already or whether this one's going to come out first or whatever, but earlier today we shot a custom 6.5 Creedmoor um, impact action Bartland barrel and we use the same primers and most of our shot strings were within one digit standard deviations, un under 10, some of them were like 12 feet per second standard deviation, but for the most part they were all single digits, five shot strings. So the point is... Um, Good components, but I, I, in my opinion, I think that the brass on this particular test is kind of the, the weak spot um, as it be. But again, just speculation. I'm not going to try to prove that. I do think that we would see, I don't know that we would necessarily see better accuracy, but I do think that we would see tightened velocities if we used a little bit more consistent brass. Um, if you were to go buy a box of like, say, Lapua, right? Or Lapua, if you want to say it correctly. Um, 
you go buy a box of Lopwood brass and uh, you run the same test, you might get some better in, uh, consistency. Now, as I say all that, I look up and uh, my, my chronograph is yelling at me because it's on low battery. So, everything I just said may be total BS. Totally possible too. But anyway, we're gonna keep shooting. I'm not gonna change the battery on that because I don't wanna try to get the thing lined back up again. We're just gonna run with it and hope that it's close enough. Because I'm probably not gonna shoot these again. Um, but we're gonna keep shooting them for, for fun. So let's keep it going. Okay, we got three charges left here. 26.6 grains, 26.9, and 27.2. This is 26.6 here. I'm curious to see what the velocities are gonna do here. All right. Just trying to get my bag settled here. It's a lot more like it on the velocity side of things. Yeah, so the average was 29.94, extreme spread of 21, and a standard deviation of 7. That's pretty consistent. So let's move on to the next one, see what happens. We are clear. Since I'm not showing them, just to keep you guys in the know, the primers from the beginning, the 24.8 charge, up to the primers that were shooting in these final charges, at least the, the last one we just shot, all look the same. They're, they're all rounded. None of them are uh, even starting to get flat that I can tell. So unless this is one of those powders that just really sneaks up on you in the end, I'm, I'm not seeing any pressure signs um, or even something suggesting that we're starting to get close to um, exhibiting pressure. So two more groups, 26.9 of N540. And then we got the last at 27.2. Gonna go for the bottom of that center diamond. Gotta keep raising up the bag here, which is kind of annoying. But five more here, and then we'll do the last five. 3,195. Hmm. This is getting weird. 3,003. Whoa, I, hmm, I think the chronograph is, the little battery is definitely not helping. <laughs> I might check those pieces of brass real quick and then we'll, we'll finish this up. 3,018. 3 I don't have any idea what happened with that that first shot. That's really weird. I, I mean, it it looks like we got almost a bug hole group with those last four. So I don't know really what to tell you. That's kind of weird. I felt good. I pulled the trigger. Three thousand. <laughs> Whoo. Uh, I, I think I need to put a new battery in there. It's, it, it definitely has a low battery, but um, I think it's just throwing some really weird readings in there randomly. Um, 3,064 feet per second average, 192 feet per second extreme spread, and a 68 feet per second standard deviation. I'm gonna delete that shot, that first shot. So now we're looking at 3,031 feet per second average, 55 feet per second extreme spread and a 22 feet per second standard deviation, which still ain't great uh, But it's a lot better than it just was <laughs> So We'll just leave that one off there. All right one more and we're done All right one last deal here five rounds 27.2 grains. 3,024. 
3,088. 3,158. 3,149. 3,135. 3,179. Alright, I'm having a, a hard time telling what just happened. You guys know better than I do what just happened because I, I, I can only see two holes. So I don't know. Maybe the bullets were exploding in midair. That is it for today, or for this video rather. We have, yeah, I don't know if we can trust any of these velocities at this point. There's 31, 41 feet per second average, 91 feet per second extreme spread, and a 30 feet per second standard deviation. Probably my fault, but whatever. We just kind of did this for fun. So, if you guys are unaware, I would appreciate it if you would check out some of the links in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. We got several different platforms that we're on. Um, RisenCitizen.com, that's the big one. Check that out, please, if you haven't already. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, I hate them, but we use them because everybody else does. So, we're on a handful of different locations. Um, if you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to ask. Try to be as open and transparent as possible. Um, if you like these kind of videos, it's always nice to know. Have a wonderful day. Always stay risen, and hopefully we will see you on the next video. Take care.